Yeah, Actually, so I mean, I may have to trend a little bit here and there, but yeah. we'll do our best. You can ask them to like get closer to the. Yeah, and I'll try to keep taking notes at the same time. So we'll see what happens. All right, uh, same deal as on Tuesday. Uh, fill this sheet out completely for your colleagues. This is feedback, not evaluation. Um, on Tuesday, you'll receive all of these back from faculty, from the faculty, and from your colleagues from your team. Also, answer the bottom part of the page when you have a little bit of downtime. Um, be as thorough as you can. Be as concrete and reality-based <coughs> and um, constructive as possible. Good morning, everyone. I'm Elias, Yusef, Valerie, and Regina of Health Group, Santa Barbara Cancer Institute, Health Patient Pharmacy, Weight and Reduction. So when we were tasked with this project, uh, we met with the Santa Barbara Cancer Institute uh, improvement team, and they told us some very interesting things about the what we have seen in the and that is that they actually have uh, patient advisory board, where they have actual patients that told them to get recommendations about how their care can be better. And one of the things that they actually, that the patients recommended was their long waiting times to pharmacy. And so our project will revolve essentially around two things. One is improving cancer, uh, cancer patient care, uh, improving their quality as they go through this graduate process, and also increasing capacity for the health. Because Santa Barbara is actually at capacity right now, and the ability for them to uh, admit more patients is great for the hospital, great for the patient. Now, a little bit of background on Santa Barbara. It's one of the, the biggest uh, cancer research and cancer treatment uh, institutes in the world. Uh, and most cancer patients are actually treated as outpatients in the Santa Barbara Cancer Institute. And inpatients or people that stay at the hospital uh, overnight uh, for extended periods of time are actually treated as regular. So this will actually take a role in our project because our pharmacy will be mostly dealing with outpatient uh, cancer prescriptions. Now, a little bit more about the pharmacy is that it, it's kind of like a specialty pharmacy in a sense. It, uh, it uh, administers uh, specialty medicine for cancer, uh, HIV AIDS, and other rare diseases, but it also administers experimental or what we'll call investigative medicine. And in this, it, it's a bit tougher in a sense because it requires more documentation, more reporting, and a little bit more process to, to the system. So we will talk about the problems and goals that we want to achieve and that we have in our project. So the problem that the, the DOCI came to us was that 30, less than 30% oh, of the patients had to wait more than 30 minutes at the pharmacy to receive their medication or their prescriptions. And as you can imagine, when all of us go to the pharmacy and need any prescriptions, just like in 30 minute wait time, I would consider a lot. So imagine have, like going through this entire process of chemotherapy and having to wait 30 minutes. It's not a very common or the patient can get really angry and it's not good for the satisfaction rate. So what the Santa Barbara Cancer Institute considers right now as an in-time delivery of the medications is the wait time between zero and 30 minutes. And only 30% of the patients have an on-time delivery of, the, of their medications. Also, chemotherapy has two phases. The first one, where the patient comes to the hospital, goes to the chair and receives their medications to IV fluids, and they sit there for a while, and when they're finished, they have to go downstairs to the pharmacy and wait another at least 30 minutes to receive their <coughs> medication for phase two. And our goal is to have more patients having their medicines on time, that it would be between zero and 30 minutes. So just to give you guys an idea of the current state of the pharmacy, um, so they, it consists of nine workstations and all of them have the same um, functionality. Some of them are used for prescribing, receiving prescriptions and giving out medications. Some could be for like sorting out the medications and so on. Um, the pharmacy doesn't just consist of pharmacists, there are also technicians and physicians in there. Um, all patients must be registered within the pharmacy to receive medication. Sometimes it can, uh, can lead to a delay in uh, patients receiving their medications because 
have to check with their health care providers and they can actually receive that medication and so on. Um, Dana Farmer doesn't always know the pension of the patient when they drive to the pharmacy. Um, they don't always just go there to uh, receive the shop, refill the medication, but they don't have that information ahead of time because that can also lead to some delays. And uh, they also have restrictions on who can actually fill the prescriptions. Um, not everyone in there can actually fill the prescriptions, so they need to have uh, specified individuals for those medications. So throughout the semester, we did encounter some challenges in the train. Uh, and basically working with a hospital is generally hard. Uh, the biggest challenge is privacy. Uh, every time we ask for some sort of data, uh, they would come to us and tell us that the data has some information about the patient, about profits and revenue. So, uh, basically, they couldn't share that with us legally. Uh, so that brought the second challenge, which uh, is the onboarding process, which took uh, almost the entire semester to complete, creating employee profiles for everyone in the team. Um, we're almost done with that, and uh, that includes the orientation process, uh, which will be done in the next two weeks, and after that, we'll be able to go into the pharmacy and shadow the process and get the data that we need. So at the potential solution that we came up with was the Medicine Chairs program. It was inspired by other programs used by other hospitals for the Medicine Chairs. So in this case, we're using chairs instead of beds. How it works is that the patient walks in, by a technician that will then take him to his chair. And why he can't put up his IP or his face on a chemotherapy is handed the night out to the And there are three different scenarios in that case. If he has an account with them, if he's enrolled in the program, if he's interested in enrolling, and if he's not. So in this case, we're just going to assume that the patient is enrolled in that program. So he logs into the information, to his account, make sure the other prescription is correct, the other prescription is online. Once he does that, he just sits back and relax, and the technician with the electronic sends his prescription to the pharmacy. And basically, the pharmacy will prepare his meds and then notify the technician once they're ready. The technician goes down, picks them up, goes back up, and hands them to the patient. So by the time the patient is done with his chemotherapy, he already has his meds. The only thing he has to do is just sign that he picked them up, and if he has any questions regarding his or anything else, he asks them, if not, he just takes the home and puts it down, having the hassle of going back down to the pharmacy. So we, we decided to create a simulation, a simulation using the arena to run the whole process, and we'll have a number of benefits, the number of technicians, the number of doctors, nurses, and the amount of chairs between for chemotherapy and delivery. And after running that simulation, we get one output, which is the wait time for patients. And basically, the goal of that simulation is to determine the optimal input to find the lowest wait time for patients. Um, as for the learning outcomes that uh, we've had this semester, or perhaps more, um, I actually have a prototype with the simulation model. So we just uh, uh, we got that and we need to figure out the input variables uh, that we need to uh, proceed to have that simulation model complete. We also need the data for that simulation model uh, to actually perform the data analysis that we uh, that model. And we established networks and connections within the uh, hospital. And we know who to we, oh, sorry, we know our point of contact. And we know who to ask for. We need a specific uh, answer to the question regarding the pharmacy. And uh, we just know what to do. We have a roadmap to zero success. We know our end goal. I don't know how to get there. Uh, previously, early in the semester, we didn't really know the steps to get there. But now we have a simulation model, and we just need to get the data. So these are the four major uh, next steps we're going to uh, go through in the uh, capsule two. Uh, so the first one is process evaluation and prioritization. So since we're currently doing the uh, abbreviated orientation in the pharmacy in Dan Farber, uh, the next semester we'll be able to go into the pharmacy and understand the process in more depth and shadow the process and talk to the employees and get all the variables that we need to start our simulation. Uh, for the next step would be uh, the potential solution and parameters analysis. Uh, this uh, step would be basically focusing on the position variables and constraints. 
Uh, the third one would be data collection and analysis, and would be getting the data that we couldn't get for this semester due to legal issues uh, and, and, and privacy issues. And for the last one would be the implementation and pilot test. So since we know we're working with a uh, with hospital, it's really hard to implement the actual solution. Uh, so that's why we're using the simulation model in order to just prove that our uh, potential solution will reduce the time uh, for the outpatient uh, wait time. Thank you. <laughs> So essentially, uh, what we'll be targeting is, well, we are targeting in our simulation model, let's call it kind of like a bypass in a way of the entire process that is pharmacy right now. By adding the meds to chairs program, we're essentially reducing the strain in some uh, entry points like the, the counter at the pharmacy and actually doing that registration through the chemotherapy center. So that's one type of input, which is people who are strictly coming for chemotherapy, because right, it's then a pharmacy treatment radiation-therapy, other therapy cycles, and also go to the pharmacy. Right, but here we're targeting one of their major issues, which is chemotherapy patients exiting and then having to walk and actually move the floor and then walk a bit to the pharmacy and go through that process. That's the, what we're targeting, which we hope will actually reduce the overall uh, cycle time for, for the pharmacy. Will there be any sort of like culture shock <coughs> to for patients that are receiving the chemotherapy? Like, are they used to just sitting there and not doing anything, or are they, are they actively like, waiting for this? Like, that? like are, they just, like, are they used to just napping while they get it, and they don't want to be talking to someone while they're doing chemotherapy? Yeah, well, that's a great question. So, Jack, we've actually um, been thinking about the easiest way uh, to actually go through the process. Um, I think the longer process is actually registering a patient. So, the patient is already enrolled in a uh, med student chairs program. It's literally like signing in, signing off, and then getting that and it's quick. It's a bit more, right, in this registration. We actually thought about it you know, working with elderly people who don't necessarily know how to use an iPad. That will definitely be a bit to cover, but that's why we're also thinking about training the technicians, et cetera. So um, I understand the simulation being used for um, proving to them, right, that this solution would in fact reduce wait times. So what is going to be your final? deliverable to them. Um, you know, you use a simulation, you prove wait times are reduced, but what are your, you know, what do you envision will be your deliverable to them? Hopefully, we would love for them to start using it or have some kind of side effect. It's a uh, calcium so it's too much harder for us to actually. But is it going to be the actual simulation or a set of guidelines on how to implement it? Like, what is going to be your deliverable it's to them? It's probably going to be a set of simulation and implement instructions on how to actually implement the rules. One of the things that we would like to actually mention is that uh, privacy is very tough to get uh, through, uh, especially when we're dealing, for example, with the medical care program, which they have to sign in uh, or register, right? It has to be a secure application. It goes through a lot of diligence, right, and uh, what we found, one of our biggest challenges this semester is due diligence just for us to get to a pharmacy has taken a semester. So mm -hmm. we're, we're kind of coming to the realization that uh, if this took this long, so we can't imagine how much longer it would take once we're actually dealing with <coughs> actual patient, pay, uh, patient data and uh, implementing something into the system. So we definitely want to like set everything up because they are very interested in us setting something like that up, but they also, from the first meeting, they said they, they kind of struggled a little at us saying, "Yeah, we want, we want to implement it into mm -hmm. the April." Yeah. So maybe, uh, I guess my advice would be create right like a set of guidelines of how to optimally implement this kind of like a, a manual, right? Of um, this is how you could optimally um, implement this in your. Um, health system based on our analysis, right? So that makes sense. So I can see the, the simulation will likely, the, the simulation of this potentially will likely reduce wait time statistically significantly. Um, and I think one of the issues of this is that you're concerned about patient wait time and patient satisfaction. So, 
with your program, you can also make it so that you can opt in or opt out. So now he's going to the point of um, people not knowing how to use iPads. If they opt out, they're not going to be dissatisfied. They, they should be less dissatisfied with wait time because they opted out. So that's, that's an option for you. Um, you also want to determine how this is going to impact the technician workflow. And so you really want to simulate like that if the technician gets involved in this. And also, what kind of verification of identification is going to be required? So um, that will probably go into the simulation um, with the technician workflow and with any sort of training for them or a need for a sign on for them as well. Because now they're taking their time and leaving their station to see if it affects our time. Um, for, so, so you're saying that people are waiting for instructions for their medication. So how would bringing, like, just bringing it to the bed instead of reducing their wait time? Because this is a problem if they're going down there, they're waiting there for more than 30 minutes. Are you, like, prioritizing in within, like, the pharmacy to give them the medication, sort of like that? Or would the providers be signing off for any of it? Or is it, like, something else? So, so how I see it is that we're not going to reduce the wait time for the specific uh, patients that are in the program because there will actually be no wait time. Instead, they finish their, their phase one and receive their meds, sign them off and leave. But we'll reduce the others outpatient that go and take, like, to pick up their meds. So the patients receiving the meds to chairs, they won't be needing to, they won't be going to the pharmacy at all. But the other outpatients that do go to the pharmacy, those wait times will be reduced. We're, we're trying to reduce the pressure on the physical pharmacy and the amount of outpatients coming in. So instead of having all of the all of the patients coming in to the pharmacy, we're kind of dispersing those patients between the ones that are enrolled in the program and the ones that actually want to go there. So it would be like transitioning to yeah. a different worker <coughs> yeah. go between. So we have to like, kind of like look a little bit different, uh, like a different process essentially. What uh, I found was uh, dialysis centers. Dialysis centers, uh, they, they, especially private ones, have like an integrated system where your nutrition is watching you around while you're in dialysis, where your your nephrologist will like, uh, and then also you can get your your medications. And it, it's kind of like an integrated system that you can do a lot of things while you're sitting there for four hours. So that's kind of like different from meds to beds, right? But it's still kind of like 